Peace, everyone. At this instance, I call for your consideration to read a few verses of the 10th chapter of Romans. I believe in this chapter you will find some information that is very appropriate for the occasion and suitable for those in this present dispensation as it was for those to whom Paul was speaking. Since the word of God is not confined to one place or one person, but it goes into infinity, his truth is everlasting, and his truth as well as his mercy endures to all generations. I thought to read a few verses of this chapter for your consideration. The 10th chapter of Romans. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a seal of God, but not according to knowledge. See the mystery? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what say is this? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Aren't you glad? I believe that's enough at this instance to give you a thought concerning the mystery of how people at times are somewhat ignorant of God's righteousness and go about to establish their own righteousness and not the righteousness which is of faith. A little while ago you heard one say, seemingly, apparently, speaking by faith. That one say how her arm was healed the store. Paul, she says, I know you are God. A word to that effect. I want to say that if you believe in your heart and can get that belief in your heart, 
that belief will heal and solve every problem. It will heal all ailments and all complaints. It will adjust matters satisfactorily. That belief is extremely hard, don't it? Is the panacea for every year and a tester for all matter and a healer for all ailments and all complaints and a satisfier of every desire. <laughs> Many may believe in the head, but to get it in the heart. And know it transcending that to every organ, muscle, finger, joint, limb, vein, and bone in your physical system. That's your every heartbeat. Speak. Oh, that's why. Say. I know that God has raised the Christ from the dead. Knowing it and knowing within yourself that it is Christ and Christ is God. Unadulterated. That will solve your every problem. That's what I'm talking about. It takes that belief to lift you, that belief will give you the victory over every difficulty, over every trial, over every tribulation, over all adverse and undesirable conditions, and will savage your going in the land of the living, and you will be saved. I'm talking about that belief will save you from sickness, sorrow, pain, and death. And it will be a matter of possibility for you to be sick or sick. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of belief in the heart. And consciously established in your memory. In your mentality, and your subconsciousness, out in your consciousness, it will solve your every problem and will do everything for you. You'll not have an occasion to look for another. Aren't you glad? That is the keynote to salvation. My heart's desire for Israel. Paul said to the Romans that she might be saved. I bear them record that they have a seal of God, but not according to knowledge. Many have seals of God and in the reflection of an emotion of the ecstasy of God through enthusiasm. But not according to now. Aren't you glad? <laughs> and all of our getting that understanding. And get that conviction in your heart and not just in your head. And especially not just theoretically to be observed from a literary point of view. Aren't you glad? <laughs> You get that conviction in your heart and believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> For with your heart, men believe unto righteousness. But with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
the Jamal confession is made to the victory and to a deliverance, to a real emancipation, to a real freedom, and so to real salvation. Oh, wow. By this we shall have a righteous government and God in your heart with your conscientious conviction will do everything for you. Everything that is necessary. So the sister, if she believes it in her heart and has confessed it with her mouth, if she was gay, she would have been made alive. That's what I'm talking about. If you would be gay and believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, God in person and bodily form and recognize God's actual presence. Thou shalt be saved from sickness, sorrow, pain, and death, and they will be felt not here no more. <laughs>